Hi guys, this is Mrs. Hahn, and today I wanted to show you how to do part of your lesson for Tuesday this week. So you'll see on Tuesday, the second task you have to do is you are going to start actually collecting your research. So either in PLP or on the learning plan, you have this link that's going to ask you to make a copy of this research docu document right here. So you should have already picked a research topic. You should have five open-ended research questions that are going to kind of guide your research. and over this week and next week, you're going to eventually write a one-page paper over your research topic. For some of you, it's more informational. You're just researching, getting information. Others of you might have a more persuasive topic. So what I'm going to say is I'm just going to pick a fake, fake topic that I've had students do in the past. And on my document, once I've made a copy and I've given it a name and I've saved it in my Google Drive folder, my language arts folder, I'm going to right here choose my topic. So I'm going to say that my topic is the link between social media and teen depression. Okay, all that right there. Here we go. So here's my chosen topic. So I haven't come to any conclusions yet. I'm just going to research this topic. So the first thing is you're gonna pick your topic, then you're gonna collect reliable research facts, quotes and statistics that answer some of those questions. So maybe one of your questions is, um, do teens who spend more time on Instagram, on Snapchat, do they have higher levels of depression? Um, now, that's kind of a closed-ended question because it's a yes or no. So you might want to change that question to um, what is the effect on teens? Uh, what is the effect on their behavior if they spend many hours on Instagram, Snapchat, or other social media platforms, TikTok? What is the effect on their behavior? So you're going to start looking for that. So you could just go to Google and you could say social media and teen depression and just see what's out there. You might need to make a more specific um, question that you type in, but for now that works. So teens and social media use, what's the impact? I like that one. I'm going to open this one in a new tab. Maybe does social media cause depression? I like that one too. So we've got a few articles. So First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this, see if there's any quotes or statistics that I could use. So I'm going to go fast because I'm not going to read the whole article to you. But a 2017 study of over half a million eighth grade through 12th grade graders found that, num that the number exhibiting high levels of depressive symptoms increased by 33 percent between 2010 and 2015. In the same period, the suicide rate for girls in that age group increased by 65 percent. Wow, that's a shocking statistic. I'm going to copy that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and you might have five quotes. You might have 25 quotes. You can keep adding rows by clicking the right click button and then insert row below. But I'm just going to add this quote here. Okay, I'm going to make it smaller because there's no, no need for it to be giant text there. So here's where you, you know, add something. Now, if you see a good quote, put it in there. You might only use half the quotes you find, but you can at least put your quote in there. And then later, it'll be there waiting for you when you write your research paper. You may end up only using some of the quotes you find, but really, you're just in the researching stage right now. So now I want you to copy and paste the link to the website just so you can easily find it again. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to copy, control C, or right click copy, um, and go back and paste the link. But here's the thing. This week in the read it section of your lesson, you learned about an MLA citation, and that stands for Modern Language Association. So there's two ways that we cite our works. One is what we call in-text. So that's after a quote. So my quote ends and I put parentheses, I put the author's last name, which is Caroline Miller. So I put Miller and then I put the page number. But for a website, there is no page number unless it's like a PDF document with page numbers on it. So I just put the author's last name. But you will also have to create a works cited page. And what, what that is for is that's at the end of your paper, you have to list the, the places where you found your information to prove that they're reliable sources. So let's say in the future you wrote this paper and your teacher wanted to, to see where did you get the information and is it a reliable source or is it more of like a blog or something that's not as trustworthy. So that's what we do. That's why we create what's called a works cited page. And it's a piece of paper that goes at the end of your research paper, whether it's a one page research paper or a 20 page research paper. For now, we're just going to start making those citations because it's easier to do it now than it is to do it in the future. And I'm going to show you a really easy life hack 
that you can um, use. You can actually make it on the Google Doc right here. So I wanna use this website here and I wanna make my citation. I'm gonna put my citations down here at the bottom. So make sure that the number one matches the number one citation. And in your citation, you learned that it has like the author's last and first name. It's got, you know, maybe the date it was published, that kind of information. But Google Docs actually does this for you, which is so great. So down here in the bottom right corner of your screen, you see this little button. And if you put your um, mouse over it, it'll pop out and it says explore. So if you click on that, it opens up this little document. And the important part is the search your docs and the web. Now, there's a couple things you can do. First, you could actually do your Google search here. You could say link between social media and depression. And it'll only bring up a few sites, but you, have, you can actually click web results and it'll open it up in a bigger tab, okay? Or another really nice thing is I've already copied and pasted this website right here. I can actually copy, oops, I can copy and paste it in the search bar right here next to the little magnifying glass. And if I do that, it'll actually bring it up right here. That's the article I was just on. So here's the important part. Okay, this little mark here, the little parentheses with the quote marks, it says cite as a footnote. It'll make the citation for you or most of it. And then all you have to do sometimes is add like the author. What I don't like is it always puts it as a footnote, which means it always puts it at the bottom of the page. So this is the right article. Check out what happens when I click this. All of a sudden, at the bottom of my page, it made a little footnote with the number one. I don't want all of your work's cited information to be in the footnote. So I want them to be in this chart. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy them. Okay, this is my number one. Delete that little number one there, and then just paste it. Ta-da! So there it is. So now my number one, here's my citation. It tells me the date I accessed it. It tells me the name of the article. It's got the link, and it's the citation for this quote right here. Here's the problem. Your citations should have the author's name, and for some reason, this doesn't often capture the author's name in the footnote. So you can go back here, and if there is an author, I need to put author's last name, comma, first name, and then a period. My author is Caroline Miller. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put last name, Miller, comma, first name, Caroline, and period. And there is your um, there is your citation. Now, in the future, we might get a little bit more complicated. We might add the date it was published or the copyright information. But for now, that's enough for our work cited. So I might go over here and explore. Ooh, this looks like an interesting article. I'm going to click on it. It'll open it up. In this article, if I find that there's a quote I want to use, I can do the same thing. I can click the little footnote. It'll put it at the bottom of the page. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to delete this little one. I'm going to paste it in here. And then I just need to make sure that I add the author's name, Rachel M. Key. Okay, make sure it's always last name, comma, first name, and then a period. And there you go. So that is how you're gonna make your works cited page. So here is gonna be your quote and a link to the article. And then down here, you're gonna use the explore button. You can either use the search bar to actually do your web search here, or you can just copy a link, paste it right there. It'll bring up the article. And then if you hover your mouse over the top right corner, You'll cite it as a footnote and it'll stick it at the bottom of the page and you just copy and paste it into the chart and then delete it from the bottom of the page. And you have to delete, you have to have to delete that tiny little number one in order for it to fully delete, but then you can just copy and paste it right in there, okay? So that's how you're gonna collect your, um, your research for your topic. Make sure you save this document in your Google Drive because next week you're gonna actually write out your full paper, your one page paper, and you're going to need to use the quotes and the, the facts that you found in your research and put them in your writing. So you're going to actually copy and paste some of these things and put them in your paragraphs. Okay, happy researching, and we will talk more about this in class.